Welcome. Hi. Welcome everyone to this moon ceremony today. Uh, I've been smudging with sage and juniper for, uh, I don't know, the last 15, 20 minutes. And, um, and so I hope that, that you who are online with me today, as well as those who will watch this later, can, can gather some of this, this smoke to cleanse and clear your area. Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my screen sharing, so we'll see how that goes today. I have some some lovely slides to uh, to share with you if my system will cooperate, but we'll see how that goes. What I would like you to do, if you would, um, before we completely get started, is go to the chat and tell me, um, you know, where where you are, so that all of us can see kind of where we are across the across the world. I may have I have several people who follow me from um, uh, Europe and and some other countries. So yeah, there's one coming in from Ireland. All right, Cora, thank you. Yeah, so uh, just post where where you are in the world. And um, if you have any questions, we're, we're going to start ceremony in just a couple of minutes. If you have questions during the ceremony, you can um, post them in the chat. And when we get closer to the end, I will open um, again and, and you can ask your questions. We can go back to the chat to see if there are questions in there as well. Um, so. Let, let me see if I can uh, get my, my system to cooperate and because um, it, was, it, was, it was freezing on me just a few minutes ago. Um, so let's see from the beginning. Okay, we got that one. Um, there we are. So um, we are, as you can see, this is a painting of, of women on their way to ceremony. And so take this time as we get started to gather uh, items that you might want for ceremony. Uh, as I said, I've been, I've been saging the area, and if you want to do that, this is a good time to grab that kind of uh, things. Um, you might want to have a, a journal or some paper to record some of your thoughts as we go along. And what I'd really like you to have is a container of water as well as an empty container that we'll use uh, when, when we go into ceremony. So when I call the directions here in just a few minutes, as well as part of what I've been burning uh, with the sage is juniper. And um, juniper has been used um, for hundreds, maybe thousands of years by indigenous people, particularly in North America, to purify and cleanse um, mind, body, and spirit. And juniper uh, represents strength and wisdom and usefulness and beauty. So I'm going to, um, to call the directions with the juniper. Part of its strength is its ability to survive in very harsh climates and sometimes even grows out of rock. And um, so juniper tends to claim the land they stand on. So I think it's a very strong uh, symbol and strong energy for us today. I have on my um, my wall of moons and the, and the black bear, I have some juniper hanging on the wall with with these things. So um, so that's where we are today. So if you are are ready, I appreciate you being here today. And um, I'll in in a few minutes I'll I'll share some slides with you. Let me uh, let me turn the slides off for right now. There we go. Okay. And, um, uh, and we'll have some time to talk a little bit later in the program, but for now I'm going to uh, lead us 
in the directions and rather than um, use a rattle or a ceremonial wand I'm going to use the uh, the juniper today to call the directions this particular one even has some little um, some little seeds I don't know if you can see them very well but it has uh, seeds not not the time of year for berries the the male plant carries the seed the female plant carries the berries so we have uh, a couple of these are um, male and a couple of female that are pulled here together so join me in ceremony here as we call the directions i start here in the center saying thank you to the divine light thank you for the energy coming in and guiding us through ceremony today and i turn to the east and i say thank you ancestors of the east thank you for bringing illumination for bringing the sunlight and this particular day for bringing the moonlight the moon rose this morning almost at the same time as the sun and so we thank you for illuminating our path as we go into ceremony today with the energies of the east bringing us light bringing us gratitude reminding us to hold the hearth of our homes and of ourselves thank you and we turn to the south mm the direction of love and laughter, the direction of dance and rhythm and music and harmony. Uh, the goddesses Hathor and Bast from the Egyptian line rise up to call us into the dance of life. And Bridget, who's with us at this closing of Imbolc, calls us to express our creativity, to remember to dance the dance of life. And we say thank you. I turn to the west, the direction of the setting sun, the direction of the setting moon. And in the west, the black bear calls. She takes us into her cave of introspection so that we may sit and meditate and listen and learn from the ancestors. And we say thank you. And I turn to the north, the direction of the darkness of night, the direction where Ma'at rises up and Danu of the Celtic line. They stand and call us to take our knowledge from the West and transmute it into wisdom consciousness. And as we bring in that wisdom consciousness, they ask us to stand up as warriors of the heart. We thank you for coming today, for bringing this energy to us, for guiding us, for directing us, for holding us. We thank you ancestors from all around. And I come back to center and lift the juniper toward the heavens, toward the planets, toward the stars our sun and the moon and we say thank you and then holding the juniper that grows out of mother earth we reach to the earth and say thank you mother thank you for guiding us thank you for leading us thank you for being with us in ceremony today aho ashe amen blessed be alhamdulillah and so it is. Welcome to ceremony. Mm. And I'll lay the juniper aside, still with us behind me on the wall, still with us in the smoke that I've burned in the room around us. Thank you so much for being here today. We're, we're here to celebrate the moon and to celebrate Imbolc, the Celtic, uh, the Celtic ceremony. And so uh, when we near the end and we've gone through some of our ceremonial practices today, I would love for you to share your experiences as when we get to that point and any questions that you have, you know, post them 
in the chat and uh, and ask them as as we get to the end. So I start today with a quote from Eudora Welty. You you may remember her writing. She was with us for almost a hundred years. She died um, several years ago at age ninety two, and she once said, "My wish." Indeed, my continuing passion would be not to point the finger in judgment, but to part a curtain. That invisible shadow that falls between people, the veil of indifference to each other's presence, each other's wonder, each other's human plight. Mm. And we come together today to part that curtain, to celebrate the new moon, to celebrate the Celtic lunar embog. New moons are a perfect time in the month to set intentions. And today during this Aquarius moon, let your intentions dissolve that veil of indifference and focus on peace and healing for all. There's an opportunity here with this vibration, this energy of the moon in Aquarius to lift the consciousness of the planet. And each one of us can do um, our share by setting intentions and radiating peace and radiating love and harmony. Mm. So I'm going to attempt now to share my my screen um, it was not working well earlier it kept freezing so we'll we'll see if this will will work for us um, okay there it's it's showing and there are the women going into ceremony and if you're just joining us please go to the chat and and type in where you are in the world and um, We've called the directions. And we're looking at a fire because Imbolc is one of the, the Celtic uh, cross quarter day celebrations of fire. February 1st or 2nd, depending on the year, is the solar date of Imbolc. And today, this year, February 9th, is the lunar date. Uh, it celebrates the cross quarter days indicating the passage of winter. It's halfway between winter solstice and spring equinox, and that's why the date uh, falls as it does. It, that's why it's called a cross quarter day. And Bridget is the, the goddess of the day with Imbolc. She comes transforming from the crone, the Kaliak in the Celtic tradition, to the maiden at this time of the year. Uh, she's releasing that crone, and we are celebrating the sun, a time of cleansing, a time of purification. With with the closing of Imbolc season, we're letting go of the winter snow, we hope. Some of us even have flowers coming in. The flowers are beginning to rise up and wiggle their way above ground, and the great snake energy of the rising goddess comes to awaken us. In addition to the lunar Imbolc, Today, February 9th, is the full moon in Aquarius, and that presents this opportunity for self-reflection and growth. But because it's in Aquarius, it's not just self-reflection, not just our personal individual growth. It's time to open up to the greater world. Perhaps it's time for us to shed our skin of individuality and let Aquarius help us with, give us that transformative energy to make a difference in the world. 
Aquarius is, is called the water bearer. That's the symbol, the emblem of, of Aquarius. And Aquarius calls us to reflect on our contribution to society, not just our individual selves. Aquarius calls us to look to the future with a positive, beautiful, hopeful vision. Um, it's a time for giving and receiving support, a time for expressing love for those around us, love, not just the emotional, passionate love expressions, but love that connects us to our divine source. Aquarius, the water bearer, rules humanity rather than the individual. So when we're in Aquarius, it's the place where our individual hopes and dreams intersect with the collective vision, with the collective world. It's the, pers the perfect time for setting intentions, making plans for the future, reflecting on personal growth and development, but also thinking about how you can contribute to social causes or to your community to help create a stronger future for all of us. This begins the beginning of, of a new cycle. And in this new cycle, we're going to do uh, a ceremony looking at ourselves but also looking at the the rest of the world so aquarius is represented by the water bearer and what that means is that the water bearer is the symbol that we are able and responsible to carry our own spiritual path to carry our own water the Aquarius water bearer can help us take our own uh, and the world's emotional debris and put it into our vessel. And then we can cleanse and transmute that, that debris, that grief, that pain, that sorrow, that regret. We can, we can transmute that into a new awakening, into deep and meaningful joy to illuminate, illuminate our path, our spiritual path, and to help uplift the consciousness. So let me stop this uh, share here for just a moment. Yeah. And um, I want you to gather your container of water and, and have nearby your, your empty container as well. Today I've brought a uh, family heirloom glass. This is, this is green glass from the 1920s or 30s that belonged to my grandmother and great-grandmother. I've put the water in, this, obviously this is a uh, cream and, and sugar um, server for the table, and I've put the water into the one that's much like a pitcher. And I'll put the empty one over to the side for now. So what a, you may have already thought about emotional debris, your own personal debris that you want to put into the water. So let's take a moment to look at an area that, that is reflected through the new moon in Aquarius. This is a time to recognize the value of our friendships and to notice acquaintances and friends, to look beyond our typical interactions and to question within ourselves the interactions with these people. So we ask ourselves, and please ask yourself, who in your association, in your social world, who enhances and encourages your growth and your development? Who in your world helps you lean into deep joy? And think about those wonderful people for just a moment. 
send them some love. And now, still thinking about your friends and your acquaintances, which of those people push you perhaps toward negative or even destructive behaviors? The moon energy helps us release emotional baggage that might block us from moving forward. So the question is, is it time to distance and detach ourselves from unwanted habits, unwanted people who encourage negativity in our lives? This potent Aquarian energy aligns us and offers us the opportunity to make positive changes in our lives. So take your container of water, either hold it in front of you or set it in front of you, but put your hands around that water, maybe even dip your finger into the water, touch that water, feel that water. And now holding that water or putting your hands around the water. Pour into it any negative debris from your own personal self. Any pain, any fear, grief, old memories that cause us heartache. Put into that relationships that you feel you need to break because they are not healthy for you. And now call in the negative debris from the world, from society. Call in the anger and the pain of war. Call in the greed. Call in the destructive behaviors. Let the water hold all of that debris. Let the water take it. And so sit with that for just a moment, allowing that negative debris to fill the water container. And as you sit with that water, with your hands around it, or your eyes on the water, let us be open to divine guidance. Let the divine light go into this water and hear these words. We call on the divine light to surround and enfold us. May we hear the messages of the divine and the wisdom of our guides to help us release our own painful memories, our ego's hurtful demands, our destructive thoughts and behaviors. We call on the divine light to enter this water, to cleanse and clear the pain, the negativity in our individual worlds and the pain and the sorrow and the greed and the war in the collective. We ask the divine light to enter the water, to clean it, to clear it. We ask the divine light to heal this water, to heal the emotions in this water to transmute the emotions in this water, 
to pure, crystallized, blessed, sacred water. And we ask the divine light to enter us, to help us release and heal and awaken. Awaken to the memory of who we truly are. Awaken to the memory of why we came to earth at this specific time. We thank the divine light for guiding us. We thank the divine light for clearing this water, for purifying it, for bringing it into sacred water. And now, pick up your empty container, put your hands on that empty container and bless it. Bless this container and say thank you. Thank you for the materials that went into making this empty container. Thank you for the hands. Each step along the way, thank you for, if it's glass, thank you for the fire, the heat that brought it to this place. Thank you for all of the aspects that brought this container into being. Thank you for the clearing of the water. And now pour this sacred water, this revitalized, transmuted water into your blessed, empty container. Watch it flow. Think of all of the beauty that this, this water can spread throughout the world. Look at the drops as it falls into the container. Put your fingers into this container and anoint yourself on the top of your head. Put a drop there on your third eye for clearer vision. A drop there at your throat that you may have the courage to speak your truth, to not deny who you are, who you truly are. Put a drop at your heart center for gratitude, for pouring out love. Put a drop on your solar plexus to help balance your emotions, to help your emotions be ready and be prepared for those that you put into the water and cleansed but the ones that want to come back and stay with you so rub your hand around that solar plexus reminding it that it's safe to be cleared to be in balance to be in harmony and touch a little below your navel at the sacral area and say thank you for the creative energy that comes from the sacral and then touching the base of your spine saying thank you for the strength thank you for the courage to get out of bed each and every morning and to live a life a life following your spiritual path remembering who you are, living a life without fear of being who you came here to be. And say thank you. Thank you for this water. Thank you for the gift. And after ceremony today, take this water and Pour it into your plants if you have any. Pour it outside on the ground if you can. If you're nearby a stream, pour it into the stream because ultimately all water 
flows back from the soil into streams that go into rivers, the rivers into lakes, the rivers into oceans. And what happens to this water along the way? Some of it evaporates and goes into the clouds. And from the clouds, it rains down upon us again. So this water that you're holding today, this is the very same water that your ancestors had in their bodies, in their systems. This is the same water that rose up to the clouds and rained upon your ancestors, rained upon the land, rained upon the plants. It is the same water cycling over and over. And we too are a part of that. So we say thank you. Mm. So I want to um, take us into a, uh, a short meditation here in just a minute. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, as we started, the, I, I know I mentioned that the sun um, and the moon rose this morning, but they, they came up the many times during the month, the moon is out at night. But right now, the moon, the dark moon that we can't really see, is out in the daytime. This morning on Eastern time, the, uh, the sun rose at 723, and five minutes later, the moon rose at 728. And today, the moon will set in just about half an hour. <laughs> A half an hour from now, the moon will set at 554. And then the sun will linger a little bit longer. It will set at 604. So the exact moment of us moving into the, to the new moon today is at 558, which is just about the time our ceremony will end. And that was the reason for choosing this ceremony at 5 o'clock Eastern today, because the moon is setting, and the moon is reaching the peak of the full moon just immediately after our ceremony today. So um, I, I do want to, um, to take us into a, um, a meditation, but before I do that, let me uh, stop and ask if anyone, let me take a pen off myself and go to the gallery view. There we go. Um, before we do the meditation, and we're going to do a meditation with the black bear. <laughs> so do you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share uh, in regard to the water ceremony or, or anything else that's been mentioned today? If you'd like to speak, just unmute yourself and go ahead. Everyone's quiet. Are you deep into the ceremonial energy? <laughs> that water is flowing deeply, flowing through through your veins, through your body. Linda. I think what what I continue to remember, especially when you you know, you spoke to the fact that it's the same water that we're holding that, you know, our ancestors held and used is is the the fact that the water has memory and that Every time we enter into these ceremonies, you know, we're continually cleansing that ancestral lineage also of all of those same things that has contributed to our world being in such chaos right now. So it's, it's, it is such a beautiful collective ceremony. And thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Yes. The saying is that when the moon is in Aquarius, that Aquarius is pouring all of our ancestral memory into the moon. And we come back to uh, Aquarius, I, I think 
once a year the moon goes into Aquarius and um, many many have said that Aquarius pours the ancestral memory out into the moon yeah um, I had a real uh, experience with the water ceremony when you were talking about um, putting negative relationships or things like that into the the cauldron um mm -hmm. it struck me that those relationships are the ones i can control are the ones with myself uh those from maybe past lives ancestral uh mm -hmm. pass ons and cultural learnings that are probably unconscious as much as they are conscious um but I feel that that's something that I have, uh, hmm, I'll say sovereignty over uh, when I'm aware of it. And um, so, yeah, all that went into the water and it was very moving. A lot of, I felt a lot of flow and uh, it was really nice. So thank you, Peggy. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Any other, Mary, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking, you know, when Susan said what she did, it made me think about, you know, the folks who enhance our growth and development are not necessarily the ones who um, cultivate deep joy. <laughs> yes. And I've recently, um, encountered somebody that I'm going to be working with in a volunteer capacity and um, I, I'm beginning to see her the, I find working with her a challenge and I want to put it that way because and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just I'm, I'm finding that she is a mirror for me to see the parts of me that I don't want to be or want to manifest. And so I just have to thank her instead of letting the relationship be like fingernails on the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, because she's in my life for a good purpose, and that is to make me a better me. Mm. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, well, as we uh, as we go into this meditation, we are we are at the the lunar embark date. So we are closing out that embark season. We are opening actually today opening the gateway of the incoming eclipse season. We have um, eclipses in March and April. Uh, I'll mention that uh, when we get to the end, but this is the, the closing of in bulk season, the opening of soon to be the eclipse season. And so it's, um, it's, a, it's a time, you know, to think about Bridget stirring the, the, the fire, stirring the creative energies, stirring those plants to rise up above the soil, getting higher and higher, spring getting closer and closer. And as that happens, the crone, the Kaliak, grows more weary. You may still have snow on the ground, but if you do, walk in the snow and remember the warmth of the sun, the warmth of the summer. It will come again because that's the cycle that we have. The mother maiden crone cycle. The maiden is ready to emerge and give birth to the sun. And so our job today is to go into introspection to sit with the black bear, to sit in meditation for a few minutes and listen to words from the black bear. So let me, uh, let me share my screen again. 
and uh, there we go. Okay. If it will, if it will move for me, there we go. So we're going to uh, dance with the dark moon as we danced with our water. And we're going to let the black bear lead us into her cave to sit in the darkness of the moon and learn from the ancestor. The moon holds memory of the millions of our ancestors who honored the moon. So let them speak to us today during your meditation. Let us hear their wisdom and help us release our ego's demands. Let us be open to divine guidance as we walk with the back black bear. So look at that screen. Look deeply into the eyes of the black bear. Become a part of the black bear. Bears are extraordinarily intelligent animals. They care deeply about family members and they grieve deeply. So as we meditate, let this black bear awaken your power within, just as the black bear has strength and courage and intelligence. And let the juniper from today's ceremony give you strength and wisdom. Let it claim you as the juniper claims the land it stands on. So gently let your eyes close or, or continue to look at the black bear, whichever works better for you. And bring your hands to your heart. Letting those eyes drift. Breathe in through your physical body. And know that that breath connects you to the divine light, to the energy of all that is. Black Bear comes and takes us into her cave. She calls us to introspection. She calls toward our longing for that connection with the divine. She guides us to her cave where we can sit and listen to her wisdom. And there at the mouth of the cave stand the Celtic Mordigan and the Egyptian Sekhmet, who will stand as our guides and our guards to protect us so we sit in safety as we listen, as we go deeper as we listen to Bear's wisdom. Bear asks if you will open your heart to the mystery and the growth. If we are willing, she will take us to that place of knowing and understanding our path. Black Bear says, it is time to lean into the darkness, into the depths of introspection. It is time to let go of our preconceived beliefs. It is time to open the curtain that we hold shut between us and the other. It's time to cross over the barrier between us and the other world. Time to connect with the divine. Black Bear says, 
I remind you of your strength and courage. And I share with you my strength, my protection, my playfulness, my harmony with the world around us. I beseech you, I call you to open yourself to new experiences from your introspection. Sit now quietly for a moment and let my energy, my vibration, my black bear vibration enter into you. Take a slow, deep breath into your physical body. And know that very breath connects you to the divine light, connects you to the energy of all that is. That divine light flows through you right now let that light surround and enfold you as you once again slowly become aware of your physical body. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. The black bear wants you to taste the honey of life. That is your awakening in the world. And the black bear asks you to remember that after your awakening, bring forth your dreams, your ideas, your intuition. Take another slow breath and then open your hands, lay them on your heart and drag your hands down the front of your body, beginning to ground yourself, awaken yourself back into the physical world. Drag those hands down your legs and shake that off into the earth. Let the earth hold it. And as you slowly open your eyes, come back to the black bear. Look at her and say thank you. So let, let the sun and the moon give birth to you this day. Give birth to the authentic you that connects you to your soul's purpose. You are a special being 
you are a beloved of the divine light. So let the juniper from today's ceremony claim you just as the juniper claims that land. Let the juniper give you strength and wisdom. Let the black bear lead you back into that cave of introspection. Remember, remember to play. Remember to take yourself less seriously. Remember to express your creativity. And remember to ask yourself where your creative juices need to flow and not just assume that it goes the same place that you've always gone with creativity. So today's ceremony closes the in bulk season, opens the doorway to the spring eclipses. The first eclipse will come on March 25th. It is a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. And then that energy from that eclipse continues on to the next eclipse, which is a new moon and total, total solar eclipse on April the 8th. And that full eclipse, solar eclipse, will be seen in most of North America. Those of us here on the East Coast maybe won't get the full eclipse view. We'll get a partial view of it because we're a little further over than the pathway. And those to the far west of the United States and Canada may not get the full view. It's kind of, it comes up from South America, I think across Mexico, and lint runs through um, the middle portion of North America. So I invite you um, to make your plans to, to go outside, and it, it, I think it's uh, around 2.30 is peak, 2.30 Eastern time. So check your time zone and make your plans to see that beautiful eclipse. It doesn't happen very often. I think we had one in North America in 2017, I believe it was the last time. So remember that um, and, and make, make your plans. So what I'd like to do now is um, open, the, open the floor again and see if there are any, um, uh, anything in particular that, that came from that meditation that you'd like to share or any, anything else or any questions that you might have. Um, I woke up today and somehow felt it was a bear day. Um, I put on a bear necklace and bear earrings and I was thinking just this is just some humor kind of but here I am sitting in this cave right I have no I didn't get the lights on before it started getting dark so it's like the only lights from the computer so I was thinking just humorous but anyway that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Good bear but, day. But the fact that you were called to wear the bear jewelry and yeah. the meditation was with the bear. Yeah. Bear, yeah. I like that. The yeah. synchronicity of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyone else? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, bear was one of my first power animals mm -hmm. uh, headed into shamanism, but there was just such a deep sense of safety and protection in that cave and just it just reminded me that that's always available to us no matter yeah. what's going on you know if we just lean lean in so thank you for yes jan yeah i'm i'm pretty excited april 8th i'm going to back to my old home in central texas to be with my college roommate and her husband for the exact eclipse. Yes, you will be right in the pathway. Right in oh. the path. It's really exciting. 
the last eclipse we had in the fall was a partial but really close here in Mesa Verde. And so I was walking my medicine wheel when we did that, we had that eclipse and that was really powerful. So I'm really excited to be in Fredericksburg, Texas for this. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I just like to say thank you so, so much. I really, really enjoyed the ceremony. And um, it's thanks to Hanno and Inga Rose that I'm here. So I want to thank them as well. And I had prepared, you know, the, the lovely emails that were sent out. So it was really interesting to, to learn about uh, Aquarius and, you know, the water. It was the water ceremony was just so beautiful. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you, Peggy. It was a beautiful and powerful ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. It was. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we're coming up right. I mean, um, my clock is my computer clock is saying that it's 556 and um, the moon um, I've, I w is supposed to set at 554. And the, the exact moment of the new moon is 558. So we are we are one minute away if these if these clocks are accurate from the uh, the exact moment of the transition of the new moon from from that waning wax the waning and the waxing and the full to this new starting over again. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and it's 357 here in Southwest Colorado, and that's when they said it was going to be exact. So that's really yeah. exciting. I can't see it. We've right. had so much snow. <sighs> just, oh, I'm so tired of shoveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, it's it's going. The snow will go eventually. <laughs> Yay! Oh, thank, thank you. you, Peggy. This was really beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Have blessed be.